Hello everyone, this is Super Galaxy Sam here. Welcome to Identity 5 tonight. Um, hi, Neon. How are you? Welcome to the stream. Today we're going to do some Survivor Rank because I want to get my B badge for Novelist. So Novelist and Nightmare are matchy-matchy. And I'm also multitasking right now, trying to put together... Uh, this costume in time for Anime Expo Chibi on uh, November 12th. So I'll be down in Ontario, California around then. Um, <clears throat> not as alien though, maybe. It depends on if I can get my 3D printer unjammed. But more than likely, I'll be going as red who is the Robodog I've been working on for a very fucking long time. <laughs> Finally free from the haunt. Nice! Hope it went well. Congrats. Nice. That's good to hear. I also the new Q I mean like it's nice but <laughs> when my hands are oh full it kind of doesn't look interesting to you guys <laughs> um I hope you can toggle it on and off because it, it would basically kind of render the hunter uh what, the uh, Hunter Weight animations? Kinda useless. I mean, you technically can still see them when matching up, but like, it's not the same. Oh, and also I have the uh, chickens with me today, so if you hear crowing from either Norton or Orpheus, yeah, you're gonna hear roosters. <laughs> That's all I gotta say about that. So if you hear, ah, 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 it's Wanda too. Speaking of which, I have Orpheus right there. Hi. What are you looking at? I'm gonna, I'm gonna mess with you. I'm gonna mess with you. Okay. Chicken, yes. We got a chicken. Chuk, 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 chuk. They're really funny. I like them. Also, I under I'm bummed, but I also understand them removing uh the crossover skin for Novelist. I was so excited when they were like, oh yeah, Novelist is gonna get a crossover skin. And I'm like, yes! And then they're like, I'm sorry, but we kind of have to yeet our original plans, which we didn't want to do, but we kind of have to. Because we found out that two of the uh, characters are based off of authors that are very anti-China like supported as in like they supported the horde ass acts actions of like japan onto china around the world war ii era so they're like yeah let's not i have all the bad skins oh bsd skins nice i plan on getting them I fucking love Prisoner's Accessory. Ah, uh, it, it's just so crisp. I have yet to watch Bungo Stray Dogs. But I will say this. I, I of course, know Jack Squat nothing about BSD. Except that the characters are based off of existing authors. Um, but... If anything, they could at least consider 
replacing the original novelist crossover skin with H.P. Lovecraft. It's so fucking good. I love it. I, I love... I. Uh, it's such a better crossover skin than the fucking L and Ray one. I'm sorry, but those two are so damn plain. I, I was like, when I got Ray, I was already, I was like satisfied because that originally was the only prisoner crossover skin, and I think at that time prisoner really didn't have any other A tier skins except Electrosis. So I was happy as is to get Ray, even though I really didn't. Even though I really have my gripes about the Promised Neverland, um, Neverland uh, children skins, in that they're so samey, it actually is underwhelming. In that I still stand by my opinion that they should have waited till season two comes out came out. For the anime so that way they have more diversity and designs to choose from but um anyhow when they paired that with um when they then went to do the death note one which gives more reinforcement as to why i seriously think they should have waited until season two of uh promised neverland is because Elle's design looks too similar to Ray's. So it gets kind of redundant. You just end up with a character... You just end up with two very similar looking characters with the difference being one's a child and one's an adult. So I was very thrilled to find out that Prisoner got a third crossover skin. And this time it was actually kind of worth it. Pepish Room. Pepish Room. Pepish Room indeed. The Peepus of Pepis. Pepish Room. The Peepus of Pepis. The Pepis Room. Oops. Oh well. I'm down for the count. And after this match, I'm gonna have to take a piss. So yeah, needless to say, I'm definitely getting da the Dazai pack. Even though I know nothing about Dazai, I'm just like, yes, <laughs> finally, a worthy crossover skin for Luca that doesn't fucking look the same as the other two and also has nice effects to it. That's all I care about. <laughs> so I'm totally gonna get it. Sir, we have tied on. Sir, please. Sir. 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 Sir, I can't do any- Sir, I can't do anything! See, see these- Okay, cool. Now I can do this. I was about to be like, See these bitch-ass hands, sir? Do you think they can fucking heal at this damn moment? No. You know what? Let me reiterate that. See these bitch ass hands, sir? They can't fucking heal at this very damn moment. Hello, El Magician. How are you? Welcome to the stream. I'm about to die. And you? Um, we're doing our first rank match for tonight's stream. I did rank earlier, <laughs> admittedly. And I'm doing this while multitasking with sewing because I get to go to a con next week. So I am kind of on a time crunch right now. Um, but it'll be worth it. Yes. It won't be Alien, aka the character you guys have seen here on this channel. Uh, though that actually correction it depends when I get the refurb done for alien but currently I'm focusing on a different character unrelated to this channel named red so I'll likely be going to the convention as red 
yeah. It's cause red's mostly complete. And aliens refurb requires me to basically do some model work and um, fix the 3D printer. Yeah, it is. Wait, I need to take a shit first. Excuse me. I am back. So yeah, that's kind of a thing. And then I'll be at uh, Anime Los Angeles, January. I don't know what my spring schedule looks like because A, I'm on a very tight budget right now, kind of. I, I, I'm my budget in terms of... Wake up. My budget, and in terms of uh, convention stuff, is pretty limited. And it currently just depends on what costumes I get done. But that said, I may or may not attend uh, my first furry convention, Golden State Fur Con, um, in spring. Basically, my aim this upcoming year is to attend a fair amount of conventions because I would be using the time at conventions to, you know, show my show what I can do as an artist, you know, advertise myself as a content creator and also just form new connections and all that because I think for me the kind of career I want to go into is being an online content creator. So that means I have to go out of my way to form connections and socialize and kind of really put myself out there. Um, <laughs> so the thing I'll have to focus on later this month is getting a new job because I don't think I'm going to get my old job back. Ow. Um, and I have learned the hard way after multiple, multiple jobs. Basically, the old metaphor, the old English metaphor, not metaphor, the old English saying of you can't teach a fish to climb a tree. Uh, basically, I'm that fish. And I've been climbing so many damn trees that I've practically started a forest fire and may or may not be responsible for my uh, own personal life's global warming, aka my utter fucking frustration. So, yeah, yeah, that's, I think that's the best way I can put it. So, basically, my November's gonna look a little bit odd because I'll spend a lot of time just taking care of myself and cleaning and trying to complete projects but then also trying to just job hunt for a very small job. Just a very, very small extra side money job. So I have something while I try to get the ball running, rolling. Yes! You hear the chickens, don't you? Yes, we do have chickens up here. 
we have our four chickens, uh, Orpheus, Norton, Alice, and Corvus. And Norton and Orpheus are very fucking loud when they crow. They occasionally do that at night on very rare occasions. It's mostly during the daytime. They also sometimes fly onto my monitor and visit y'all, so... There's that, too. <laughs> Ara, Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Priestess. I am gonna fuck off. <laughs> Keep forgetting third tier is a 50-50. Yeah, I don't like being an elk because it's such a slog. Like, Mammoth, yeah, it takes forever and... People can be a bit more competitive and whatnot over there, but at least it's consistent and people know what they're doing. Yeah. Like, my, my thoughts on Elk Tier is when you're someone who's played this game for so long and clearly has experience, it can be very annoying and frustrating to keep being thrown back into elk tier because at this point you pretty much know what you're doing. It's different if you're like genuinely a new brand spanking new player to rank. That's different. I say, you know, fair, but yeah, for me, um, I don't like being an elk because I've been playing this game for so long that it's just frustrating. <laughs> yeah. Elk's fine on its own. It's when you keep getting thrown back into to the spot over and over and over again that it's like, please. Please. I, I, I've, I've worked hard to get to Mammoth and now I'm down here. <laughs> kind of thing. Alice, are you pecking? Here, I'm gonna see if I can pick up Alice. I'm trying to bring a friend to Croc. Nice! Alice, come here. What? I wanna pick you up. Come here. Alice! Boop, 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 boop. As you can tell, three of them are named after Dick Capital characters. Come here, Alice. Anyways, I have Alice. I have all the skins on and nice. I have the money. I just need to cash them in. Yes, chicken. You can hear her. Chicken A ASMR. Hang on. Can I bring this closer? Yes, Alice. Chicken ASMR. <laughs> yes, chicken ASMR, yeah! She's just vibing in my arms right now. <laughs> beep, beep. Beep, 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 beep. Beep, 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 beep. <laughs> I love how the closed captions capture her little peeping. <laughs> Hang on. Can I get... Chicken noises, yeah! Speaking of Alice, I am looking forward to the identity switch for little girl, Memory. A.K.A. Alice. I look forward to that, I'm excited. Oh, 
Are you falling asleep in my arms? Need to save up for Alice. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck. Can someone clip that? Please? Let's see here. Oh, she's falling asleep in my arm. It'll be... yes. <laughs> Indeed, yeah. I wanted to do more valid now I'm over here with a chicken who wants to fall asleep in my... Oh wait! In my hand. But, hold on. I have something for... You know what? I'm gonna bundle her in my blanket that I have here. I was gonna put her in a little... In this little pet hoodie I have where it has a pouch that you stick your pet in so they can cuddle you. But I can't reach that right now, so I'm gonna do this. I may... <laughs> Valid. Stay right here, Alice. Wait, is their name I sell tamales? <laughs> it, can someone clarify if that translates to I sell tamales? Where? Explorer's name is I sell tamales. Vendo tamales. <laughs> I see Kurt has a new occupation. Now I want some tamales are good. I don't blame you. No! <laughs> oh, it's Dream Witch. Well, this match will either turn out terrible or unfortunately very embarrassing for Hunter. Occasionally waiting to always at 10 p.m. Oh. <laughs> Eventually, I still have this idea in mind. But like I said, my planning and scheduling and everything has been such a fucking mess. I haven't been able to do squat. Um, but I would love, 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 love to go ahead and um, do a stream where I kind of pseudo cosplay Eli. And I have the birds with me, you know, like, perched, and you guys can see them on the webcam. I would love to do that. <laughs> Don't run three. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So on Novelist, I typically don't run, yeah, I typically don't run Tide on him. Because he's real good for tiding and harassing, so uh, typically I tend not to really rescue with him. I tend to just be a fucking nuisance. <laughs> yeah. Oh, nice. I've I've gone against a few B four U members before. Yes, borrowed time. I called a tide turner for. Wait, three. Oh, I am dumb. Yeah, I don't run borrowed time on him. 
because of flywheel and the whole fact that if you kite well enough, you kind of can keep Hunter away from you. Fucking patroller spammer. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, I've gone up against a few of them before. Uh, mainly on other streamers' streams, because... It's one of those streamer knows a streamer knows a streamer thing. All you did was game. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, I know one of them uses Dream Witch. I see. Yeah, I don't pay too much attention to the the very well known like competitive teams, <laughs> or at least what's going on with them. I I just know who some of the team members for different teams are, and that I have peers who know them. One Koei flower. <laughs> oh. Okay, <laughs> so let's get this pot started hang on how is my rank oh of course it goes down because elk nice one of these days i still like i still have an interest of eventually trying to join competitive and enter koe but i i just keep running into situations where it's not good timing for me If that makes sense. But I would love to. You know. My doors are open whenever nice. Thank you for thank you for the offer. Oh. He's a great counter to uh Geisha. I I like kiting Geisha's novelist. It's fun, but I don't know why I can't uh, hide from her face there. I was like, I, why is her? Why is the action to face her not popping up? Yeah, if literally. Novelist Orpheus Orpheus is fucking good against uh Geisha. Like he's he's really good in the right hands for going up against her. Um Nyad and BQ are terrible for him. Uh Disciple is pretty bad for him. Um does okay ish. Well, understandably, because of how he was designed alongside Nightmare. But Nightmare and Novelist, they counteract each other, so it's kind of a toss-up. You kind of do it okay-ish on either side. Uh, Hell Ember is a good counter against Novelist. Unfortunately, there's a lot of things that currently counter Novelist. Anne is busted. Uh, current day Anne is annoying as fuck, yeah. 
Like, I like Anne. I think she has a neat gimmick and everything. I can't play her for shit. But it does get annoying to go up against her. Yes, they are planning to rework Orpheus, and as someone who, you know, loves game design and all that shit, <laughs> if I could do it before they do it, um, I would love to make a video going over theories on how they could possibly change up his, re like, do change up his uh, gameplay and how they could rework him. Because I don't think we see enough of people talking about um, the game design in Identity 5 and, um, you know, how it plays into the lore of Identity 5, how it's used to display the personalities and quirks and everything of different characters and all that stuff. Because it... Because in, in terms of a game like Identity 5, where you clearly have characters with their own backgrounds, the personalities, quirks, etc., um, and you're a very heavy show-not-tell type of game, for the most part. There are definitely parts in Identity 5 that are very tell-not-show. Um, but on the whole... A lot of the nuances and the lore and everything is very show not tell. So part of the show not tell factor also includes things like how they play with how they uh, behave gameplay wise. Like for instance, the ability Orpheus has as both novelist and nightmare can actually tell you quite a bit about uh, can actually tell you quite a bit about that character. Same thing with, um, you know, Hell Ember, things like that. Why suffer someone you hate when you can make a new player play them? For you, ba anyone basically, yeah. So, There's other factors to game design and all that. Like, for instance, uh, fun is unfortunately like fun is unfortunately subjective. There's no necessarily objective way to define what's considered fun for everyone. Everyone's gonna have a different uh, definition of what they think is fun. Um. You know, but one of the gripes that I have heard from people who've played as novelist is they find him fun, but the issue that I tend to hear a lot is they don't like that the adversity they have as the player is taken away from them. Which is, you know, for something like Identity 5, it is a factor to consider when designing characters is how much control, to, how much control and how much power should you allow the player to have on the playing field when they play in a match. And a lot of people, especially when as players for video games, they don't like it when you take too much of their adversity, you know, their ability to be in control of their character away from them. And the issue with uh, Orpheus, I see, is there's a neat gimmick that clearly they're trying to use to tell a story about Orpheus with it while trying to fit it into the mechanics of their asymmetrical horror game. But the cap issue here is the way, like basically the issue here, here is the question of how the hell are you going to design a character that needs to be functional and playable and fun uh well hopefully fun because once again fun is a very subjective opinion um for players while still 
being able to communicate to players who this character is. Yeah. I, I will admit, uh, memory does have some issues too. And once again, it comes down to that factor of how the hell are you going to tell a story that still functions within the parameters of Identity 5 with how a character plays. You know, it's not exactly that easy to take a writer and be like, oh, he's a writer. Um, he writes mystery novels about detectives and shit. Um, how the fuck are we gonna give him an ability related to his writing that works with, uh, you know, this type of gameplay? You know, it's, it's not, it's not an easy question. And yeah, uh, with memory, with LG, um, it's the same thing. It's like, how the hell are you going to tell a story? Oh, fuck me! <laughs> how are you going to tell a story about a character who is a representation of someone's memory of most likely two different people in a in a childhood friend who's an adult and basically the memories of his very young daughter the thing is he already does that he already messes with the control of the hunter You know. I would say in ter so the thing is if you mean something where it's kind of like Wu Chang where like Yeah. If you mean something like how Wu Chang reverses the key controls for the character, I I can see what you mean, but then it also raises the question, how is this relevant to Orpheus? You know, as a character. Because the reason why he has his initial ability is the idea is He's using his writing skills to control the other players. And a huge part of him as a character overall is he does have this tendency to spy on people, to observe people, to watch people's movements and how they behave and react. Um, and he uses the information he has to honestly be a bit manipulative. Um, at least that's what I can gather from, you know, his design and the information we have about him and his different um, identities, or not identities, but like, I'm gonna just say personas for now, just so that we, we don't get it confused with, um, you know, actual, very real concepts. So I'm just gonna say personas for now. Since that's a bit more clear cut than other uh, similar uh, definitions. But yeah, basically Orpheus's whole thing is he's very, very much a character that, um, you know, is likely a bit manipulative. He uses the information he gains from watching others and seeing how they react and behave for his own advantage and motives. He has this need to, he probably has a bit of a need to, like he likely potentially has a bit of a need to want to be in control of himself and um, 
What did you do? Oh, in control of his life and himself and his surroundings. He probably doesn't like... Like, based on what we've seen of him, he probably does not like being... Having his circumstances be out of his control. He wants to be the one who calls the shots. And who knows, maybe this is also part of why, at least from what we've seen so far, he works alone as a detective. He might not like, uh, he might not like or do well with working with other people. So. Just a thought. And all of that, like I said, it just comes from reading his design and his gameplay elements and, you know, the information the game does give us about him. Yeah. What can I say? Elk's a mess. <laughs> I know, I'm coming. Just don't rescue me. Actually, I should probably surrender. So yeah, based on that tangent of information, and you know, like I said, this is a video I want to make for YouTube, so I'll have to think about it, because, uh, well, I would love to do lore videos that properly cover the lore of Identity 5. I think my strong point is more of talking about, um, the design elements of Identity 5. Well, here's the thing, you know, we don't know how he, what he feels. Yeah, I mean, like, there's been times where I've thought of possibly doing, like, setting up a Spotify podcast, but the issue is it's just myself. I don't have anyone else to, you know, do this podcast with me, sadly. Um, but yeah, if you check his, no the, the, uh, clues for him. Looks away. <laughs> yeah, it was, but unfortunately, the char the character is based off an author that's very much supportive of. That apparently is very much supportive of the actions that imperialistic uh, China, not China, imperialistic D Japan did to uh, China in World War Two. So, people didn't like that. Understandably. <laughs> Government did not like that. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I think it says somewhere that um, he likes quiet places. So like his traits are he's arrogant, he's sensitive, melancholic. Yeah, he doesn't like noisy places. So the thing is, just because you don't like noisy places doesn't necessarily mean you don't like people. And same thing with control, you know, he could just be someone who doesn't mind people, but in terms with working with them, in terms of, say, you know, working as a team and all of that, he might not be too much of a team player, but he's not like Aesop where he completely is stressed out by people. Um, it's also why, in terms of like Meyer Briggs shit, I can see why, like, Meyer, Myers-Briggs, um, people like for fun, for fun like to go ahead and categorize, or try to categorize fictional characters' personalities into the Myers-Briggs. So there's different sites uh, of po posting different people's opinions and the popular opinion and all that. And with Orpheus, um, I've seen him labeled as an INTJ, um, And INTJs, they basically are very 
plan oriented. They're very oriented and very like, mm -hmm. this is how I want to do things, and I would prefer to do it myself. Ooh. Kind of deal. Is, to, is the best way to put it. I myself am actually constantly uh, categorized as an INTJ surprise. I, I might not seem like it, but I am. I'm just a disoriented one. Um, so that that's probably part of why sometimes with Orpheus' personality, I'm like, you know what? That's a fucking mood. <laughs> yes. So basically, INTJs... Um, they're they're basically it's basically Orpheus is a pretty good is a pretty decent example of an INTJ. There he's someone who can get along with people, and you know can like have things like relationships and all that shit. Because we did see that he was married and he did successfully have a child. So you know clearly he's able of you know romance and all that shit. He just doesn't like a lot of noise, you know, likes more of a controlled environment, shit like that. And a lot of his planning and what he does and thinks is very observant, very much taking in the details and information of the world around you in order to process that information and, like, notate it for later for when you may want to use it. Oh, nice. Um, basically, they like... I, I know some Meyer Briggs personality test sites. They like to sometimes nickname INTJs like the Chess Master, which makes a lot of sense. <laughs> basically, that's kind of just how the brain for people who supposedly fall under this category kind of are or kind of tick. You know, everything is kind of like on a chessboard and you just have to figure out how to play your pieces. So I, I hope that gives some insight on how I at least, at least for myself, how I kinda been trying to understand and interpret uh, this character based off of what information we get visually, uh, design-wise, all that stuff. So, you know, when you get a character like that, I guess how would you rework Orpheus as the novelist? Most of the time, that's fair. Um, I would, personally, what I would say is definitely still keep that whole aspect about him spying, about him being observant and wanting control in mind, and his, you know, his interest in criminology and his occupation as a writer, you know, intact. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I'm like, game design. <laughs> I'm, I'm good. Game design. Mm -hmm. Um, hey, we got a Leo. Yeah. Um, but how I, so personally, I would have to really think about it and sit down and write down and all that. But the first thrown out idea I have here, though, would be make it so he's kind of more like Seer. Honestly, it's a great topic to explore. I badly want to do a video covering, uh theories on how to rework a uh, novelist on how novelists could be reworked game design wise and um, I also would love to do a small series where I design create designs for speculative biology species or care like species based off of game characters because I think there's a lot of fun things you could do with designing a species based off of, you know, characters like Lucino and all of that. Uh, there's a lot of fun elements to play with when using character for inspiration. So that's something I would love to do. 
you get an idea of what I have in store or what I have in mind as like a first impulsive thought, I tweeted about it on Twitter and here's what I'll, um, state about, so here's the tweets. Okay. I am now going to read them. Got to think about it, but I think my next big original video idea for my channel would be to create a speculative species slash creature designs based off of game characters. I would kind of want to do a funky take on Identity 5's evil reptilian and nightmare and then on IDV characters like FNAF Puppet. For some reason, I want to do a spider-like vampire bat design based on Puppet. Basically, the videos would cover the what if of if aliens saw the designs of fictional characters we've created and went, wow, we like how, what it can do, slash how it looks, etc., and we want to create a new species inspired by it to populate a planet, but we're restricted to the realities of science, what would these creatures look like in comparison to their counterpart inspirations? Looks way in potential, yeah. And FNAF, yeah. I don't know why, but a monkey like Sp Hunter might be that. Oh, that would actually be real cool. I would love that. Get something like um. Get something like uh. What the? F get something like the fucking charger from Left for Dead in and kind of take those mechanics and make a monkey. DM is open, bless. Thank you for the offer. Um, let me quickly finish reading this thread. So, it was that, and then I put down, um, where was it? So, for Lucino, this is what I put down. Some immediate thoughts for this idea. Designing a species based off of Lucino slash evil reptilian will be first. Species will not be a true reptile species, rather falls more on, along the lines as creatures like Dimetrodon, who are dino-like but not true dinos. Uh, more kangaroo and or frog-like build. The planet would likely have to have a different atmosphere and gravity polar in comparison to Earth in order to compensate for the species' large size or have the species be smaller than the inspiration as most large creatures on Earth typically aren't capable of jumping to the insane heights that the inspiration can. <clears throat> Alternatively, perhaps it'd be possible to enable a large humanoid species to jump to incredible heights if the bones had honeycomb-like structure akin to birds and some sort of air bladder. The tail is used for immediate lift for sla slash for starting jumps. Unlike the inspiration, this species would may be somewhat cut feathered and uses these feathers for brief gliding. Much like Microraptors, essentially, this Lucino-inspired species would be a convergent evolutionary take on theropods. It sounds like thus far, one where a species with very mammalian ancestry decided to cut on a similar direction. And while yes, it'd be odd to have a mammalian-based species still harbor feathers, I doubt it'd be impossible for mammals to develop feathers as feathers are made out of keratin much like skin and hair. Birds and mammals are also endothermic, so there's a bit of that reasoning, too. They may only have enough fe feathering coverage to aid in lift and brief gliding as they've been primarily developed to jump incredible heights, so the need for flight isn't really a major focus. They'd be terrible at running, too, potentially, but could bound fast if needed, kind of like a kangaroo. Would probably make them related to slash be part of the same family as whatever the nightmare-inspired speculative species would be. The two would have this similar evolutionary adaptions to validate them belonging on the same evo evolutionary branch and be both both the mammalian convergent evolutions to birds and reptiles. Um, I also noted here maybe the feather slash wings used in to aid in gliding are alongside the same areas as bats that bats and sugar gliders harbor their wings instead of how Microraptors have theirs. So basically, TODR, you would have this creature based off of, you know, if there was a species of creature that looked a lot like evil reptilian, 
you know, but was restricted to the limit limitations to, you know, real world science, how would this creature's biology look like? And the current thought I have is it would likely be this kind of convergent evolution to reptiles and birds. So basically they're still a mammal. They just look very reptilian and bird-like and or bird-like. And they have a kind of more of a kangaroo, a weird kangaroo lizard, humanoid lizardish build. Because there's not that many mammals I can think of that, you know, can jump like that can jump using the same mechanics that uh, physiological mechanics that Lucino's design has. It would probably have to be something more like a kangaroo's. Um, yeah, hi, hi, Res. We got the juicy stuff. <laughs> yeah, and um. The tail, and also another reason to validate why I think basing it, the build off more of a kangaroo would be a good idea for the speculative species is because kangaroos do use their their tails for, you know, getting around in their locomotion and, you know, things like that. So it wouldn't make, it would totally probably be possible if you had this very large lightweight creature uh, rely on, you know, creating lift with their tail and their legs and then once they're in the air to keep themselves remaining in the air for just a long enough time like not super long but just long enough to hunt uh they would probably have an adaptation like sugar gliders where there is kind of a skin membrane oh, like a feathered skin me skin membrane um across the limbs that kind of like folds out when they're in the air yeah, so basically I would be doing a video on something like that. Um, it's not guaranteed, but I would, I badly fucking would love to do it. Yeah, I, I would love, I would love to do a character design video that kind of merges two interests of mine, which is speculative biology with video games. Not gonna lie, I would watch it. Oh my god, I uh, thank you. Yeah, I I think it would be cool. Like for in, uh, instance, I'm gonna focus mostly on Lucin the Lucino inspired one first. But I'm already getting ideas for how nightmares would work. I'm thinking nightmares would probably be the species that create that uh has managed to form a symbiotic relationship with crows, not ravens, because ravens are actually monogamous. Fun fact. Uh, the dif there's some differences between crows and ravens, and one of them is crows tend to form these large groups um, consisting of generations of family members and stuff like that. Yeah. No, I do plan on expanding to other video games, not just Identity 5. Like I said, I would love to do one um, covering... I'm so sorry to get this person. Uh, covering uh, FNAF's puppet character. Um, and I'm thinking for the puppet, I would have to do research because I'm not like super, super into FNAF. I just vaguely know what I know from watching videos done by fans for fun um fans of the game for fun um but for the puppet i think what would be fun is to create is to interpret the puppet's design into a spidery vampire bat species i would not know i'm kind of like, like I said, I have to research, but from just a physical standpoint, I'm like, it would be so much fun to create a vampire bat that's based off of uh, the puppet. And have this vampire bat be a flightless one that kind of like crawls on the ground and all of that. Kind of does a little bit of bounding. Is very thin and spidery-ish. <clears throat> um... And is venom? <clears throat> excuse me. 
Thank you. Thank you. Um, but yeah, it's venomous. Um, and like, it could maybe do something like it hunts in insects and all that because this is like a dinky ass vampire bat. It's not something huge. If you ever look at what vampire bats look like they're very they're typically very small so it would fall in the lines of that um but uh maybe not a van yeah a vampire bat i'm gonna say i want to say vampire bat yeah but basically this vampire bat they would have like some sort of toxin that they inject their prey with um, and you know, it could be something like small door mice or something like that. And sometimes in a big ass van behind you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I'm kind of thinking more on the lines of like, real world animals like if this was an actual legitimate animal or species or something like what they would what what would they look like kind of you know valid i will say though if anyone like ever um wants like if anyone ever wants to create a game that's kind of inspired by these ideas you know by all means go ahead i i'm kind of just poking around and trying to think of ideas for this video series but um yeah it would be like this vampire bat this dink ass little vampire bat that has a venom uh that's kind of like a neurotoxin and the neurotoxin uh once it gets into the praise you know bloodstream and all of that um it kind of fucks with the brain in the sense that when the uh, bat makes this chittering noise um, when the, this when this bat makes the chit this uh, you know the chittering noise bats make <clears throat> what it does is the prey's neural system respond the infected prey's neural system responds to that and kind of like jerks around weirdly and um, essentially is paralyzed but kind of looks like they're doing a little jig yeah so I I don't know how odd of a cre like how believable of a creature that sounds like but I hope you guys enjoy <laughs> yeah Though I think for, uh, the Nightmare and Evil Reptilian one is kind of up for debate on whether it should be, like, a set, like, something, a species, species that are more along the lines of, like, animal animals, or if they should be, like, you know, capable of, uh, having their own cultures and shit just like humans. Honestly, that's what I was starting to think as I'm t telling you guys about it. I, listen, it honestly is oddly very fitting to, <laughs> to base a vampire bat trapdoor spider hybrid off of puppet. Think about it. You have the whole jack-in-the-box shit. <laughs> I mean, they're supposed to be spoopy. <laughs> but yeah. I'm already scared. Oh, okay. It's probably a good thing it's not a real creature then. <laughs> But yeah, for Lucinos and 
Orphes. I don't know if I should have the species based off of them be more like a like a spe like more like species that are capable of forming civilizations and shit, or if they should be more like animal animals. Yeah, those- I- I will admit, those are fucking freaky as hell. The- the cordyceps and shit. But, you know, if... anything, it's very on point for... spoopy... FNAF-inspired animals. <laughs> So yeah, I've gone over what I think I want for Lucinos. Um, yeah. How can I unsee <laughs> what I already saw? Sorry. Music and blood and old. I'm gonna- I know I'm gonna have fun with the Nightmare one. As someone who enjoys birds and likes reading about crows and ravens and shit. Number 15. Burger King foot lettuce. It's gonna be a fun ride. Because I think birds, like, the way birds socialize and interact with other species is really fun. I like birds. If you could not fucking notice, as the, cra as the crazy ass bird person here literally has four fucking chickens up in the damn room. And like allows them to sleep on the bed like dogs. <laughs> yeah, you, you can tell I have a bias here. Totally, totally don't have a bias towards Orpheus. Not at all. Me having a bias towards characters was shh. As ever. Child, where the fuck are you? We're nothing but pets and livestock trapped in captivity in this city forever. Let's Wait, I can use just a search, tonight. right? Maybe tomorrow we'll see this again. Can I? Can't I just use just desserts? Damn it! <laughs> I was like, oh, I'm gonna use just desserts for once. More of the mammal end, but I... Yeah, fair enough. Honestly, though, I high Like, if speculative biology interests you, I highly recommend checking it out. It's an interesting topic, and there's a whole community that surrounds it. Very, very sciency based. You have to stand still for just desserts, I see. Well, I'm gonna do that because she ain't coming out. And I'm not gonna go fucking wander around. I'm sorry, but. <laughs> you know. She hasn't, like, they have an ability to risk taking the risk against me, but whatever. If a hunter was an alien, it would be influencing. Yeah, it would be interesting. The thing is, it wouldn't be out of place either, because uh, a heavy inspiration of Identity 5 is Lovecraftian tales and cosmic horror. Oh, yeah, and I definitely plan on doing a video eventually covering uh, Identifier's connection to uh, 
paleontology, believe it or not. There, you will be surprised how heavy of a connection um, it has to the subject of paleontology. Yes. I know, it sounds kind of whack right now, but when I say it's a thing, it is a thing. Oh, this is an interesting animation. <laughs> Leaves. Yes. Elaborate. So, oh boy. Uh, there is a lot. There is a lot of tie-ins to paleontology and identity five. Part of this is thanks to paleontology's ties into H.P. Lovecraft's story. And I do mean there's quite a few fucking ties into H.P. stories with paleontology because it turns out the guy is into that shit. There's other stuff that ties identify to paleontology as well. A uh, good starting example is um, the Crystal Palace. Believe it or not, the Crystal Palace was a real place. Historically. It did exist, and what happened to it is it burned down and got heavily damaged. They tried repairing it, and eventually they just tore the whole thing down. But one of the things the Crystal Palace is known for is the Crystal Palace dinosaurs. Which are these very famously large sculptures that were maybe like one of the main or like the first mainstream uh interpretations or attempts at interpreting dinosaurs back when paleontology wasn't as well understood um back when people didn't really know what the fuck a dinosaur was all that stuff <clears throat> So you have these artists, I forgot the name, I keep forgetting, you fucking think as someone who's a nerd about this shit, I would remember, but for some reason his name has always escaped me even when I was a kid and like super into this shit. Um, as in like I knew every single little fucking detail about paleontology growing up, but um... anyhow there's this artist who would take you know records of the, the number you dialed is not thank you for the follow matzo matzo uno matzo matzo uno i hope i pronounced that correctly thank you for the follow welcome i hope you enjoy your time here and yeah my name is super galaxy sam i play a variety of games with my main uh meat and potatoes as you can say being identity five and we sometimes talk about interesting topics like this where we uh, go into kind of very nerdy shit and just other things as well. Aw, it's okay, Neon. You'll, you'll eventually get to join eventually. Or you can ask me for the next team. But yeah, um, there was this artist who um, took the first rendi- like, took- some of the first renditions of the fossils. <laughs> I will become... Yes, next team. I will become a microwave. <laughs> mm, bless. But he took some... Uh, basically, he would take the renditions paleontologists would give him of the fossils they would discover of these dinosaurs and said, Here, um... Do your best to illustrate what you think they look like. And that's what he would do. And he is famously known for his rendition of the Iguanodon. Which, by the way, looks nothing like an Iguanodon. As we know them today. But back then... <laughs> Kick Z Magician's Ash. I will try. But back then, you know, they didn't have any prior renditions of Iguanodon or other dinosaurs, so that was the best they had, and he interpreted Iguanodon as this 
four-legged li- this giant four-legged lizard um, that had a horn on its nose, which now we know today to actually be their thumb. So interesting stuff like that. That's just a starting point, though. Other examples of how paleontology ties into identity five is uh, <laughs> flat out Lucino, just Lucino. Need I say more? Um, in some ways, Orpheus's whole gig ties into concepts of prehistory in terms of like dinosaurs and shit i know that sounds weird but hear me out birds are modern day dinosaurs and birds outlived the extinction of dinosaurs kind of like how orpheus fucking outlived basically everyone in the damn manner Um, I can go further into it later, but yeah, that's that's kind of something to keep in mind. Yes. You, you see how I'm guessing you're not seeing how I'm thinking, right? And here's the thing about extinctions. Extinctions don't mean things are permanently gone forever. Like, that's it. Doomsday, the end. It just means that there's now huge leeway for major changes. Orpheus literally goes through a fucking re- like, rebirth. You know, he ha- he ends up changing his whole lifestyle and identity and everything. Literally, and you know, this also ties into the fact that ferns are a prehistoric plant and he had- uh, um, Identity 5, the manor, uh, Orpheus, all of that, has heavy ties to ferns. Um, he also has heavy ties to reincarnation, which is basically what extinction is. It's basically Earth's way of pretty much making way for something new. So, literally, and literally they have talks about they literally mention shit like reincarnation and all that. Um, rebirth, kind of restarting over, changing up who you are as a person. All that stuff. So that's basically how I see... Yes, that too. Once again, you have the whole rebirth, reincarnation extinction of self thing going on with Anne and Alba. So, yeah, that's kind of how I interpreted that connection. Yes. Actually, it applies to a lot of the characters. Perfumer, Anne, Alva, Mary. If you don't, if anyone has caught on, uh, you would notice, y'all would notice that a lot of Identified's characters or at least the ma- especially the very major key players are all characters who go through drastic changes in their lives where they've had to leave the old for the new they you know they basically had to undergo this huge transformation that requires ditching how they uh, knew their life basically they, they don't get, yeah, they don't get the luxury of uh, going, oh, I can stay the same person for as long as I fucking please. But to be honest, that's not how life works. Oh, that's a good point, too. So, yeah, that's, uh, that's some little, uh thoughts right there about ties to those are my tangents you know but i i swear it will make a thousand times more sense once i put together the video on how identity five ties into paleontology the themes surrounding how it could tie into paleontology using paleon 
paleontological paleological themes in writing and storytelling and themes related that are often tied into prehistory like once again like i said extinction and all that stuff you know a lot of people heavily associate extinction with you know prehistory and yeah um. except for freddy freddy <laughs> can't wait for it thank you Yeah, I look forward to it. I hope I hope you guys enjoy it. End up enjoying it as much as I do. So, yeah. I probably blew you blew y'all's ears out with so much information, but I hope you guys enjoy my info dumping. <laughs> what can I say? I info dump because I I love what I do. I I love my passions. I would not know honestly. I fucking hate this. Yep, here we go. When you bitch luck. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, I would not know. I would have to look into it. But I wouldn't be surprised. It's a mini tide effect. What are these humans doing? Leave! <laughs> Go! Uh. Okay. So we basically tied? Question mark. I was about to throw hands! Here, I'm gonna restart the team. Dismiss team. That way I can bite Neon. There we go. Oh yeah, uh, speaking of the Crystal Palace, um, I'm sorry, I'm gonna have to kick this person. I'm sorry, human. Wouldn't be <laughs> mood. My thing is, I find Adobe Premiere to be very clunky, but it's what I'm used to using, so it's a love-hate relationship. <laughs> But, um, speaking of the Crystal Palace, if you go online and search photos of the Crystal Palace, you can actually get, you can actually see what the Crystal Palace looked like. Valid. They're all leaving. Come back. Yeah, Google it. Type in, uh, the photo like the crystal palace or photos of the crystal palace and you will see what the real crystal palace looks like and the very interesting or real cool part is you can if you remember what uh the crystal palace 
how the Crystal Palace was illustrated for Identity 5, all the backdrops and everything for that story. It looks very much like the actual Crystal Palace. Like, you can literally find photos of the Crystal Palace and pinpoint where all the characters within the anniversary storyline uh, were standing and all that stuff. Yes. Soccer team. <laughs> so yeah, it's all really cool stuff. And it's worth looking into. <laughs> Yeah. It is very, very interesting stuff. I'm Tostada. Nom 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 Yes. Oh yeah, and um probably after I do that I might cover a discussion or like do a video essay covering thoughts on if we will ever get a paleontology character and a werewolf character. Yes. Text to speech is wonderful. I will say though, I have very valid, strong reasoning for why I think it's possible for those two types of archetype, uh, uh, character archetypes may come to identity fight. Here's the thing. I see werewolf being very much a light, have a very high likelihood of coming to identity five. They've thought of using a werewolf character before because Norton used to be a werewolf. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you, Matsuno. But yeah, they've uh, considered a werewolf character so there's already that uh gives re reasoning for that chance to happen but also because a lot of identity five's themes cover topics that can be related or easily tie a we werewolf in and also um the most recent halloween event actually talks about a werewolf yes that too Basically, I basically it's like I will be shocked if we don't get eventually if we eventually if we don't get a werewolf character. As for the paleontology one, like I said, there's lots of ties to paleontology in Identity Five that it makes sense to eventually eventually introduce a paleontology character. Um, I think a good potential candidate would actually be a character, would be basing a female character off of Mary Annie. And there's reasons for, uh, that I'll eventually go into for why. But some key reasons are, uh, the fossils that Lovecraft was primarily interested in were a lot of sea, uh, sea-based, um, fossils. <laughs> So things like ammonites, um, trilobites, all that stuff. The very, very alien looking fossils were the ones he most he was most intrigued by and used as inspiration for characters like uh, Cthulhu. And uh, yeah, for Cthulhu. Cthulhu is inspired by uh, by that stuff. Um, other reasons to support the idea of hey why don't they make a character ba make a survivor character based off of Mary Anning is um, Mary Anning is a was British um, she, she was a British individual 
which makes sense for you know identity five setting of taking place in Britain. Um, and those are kind of the main key thoughts. Oh wait, excuse me. It's like how does Mary Annie tie into this? Uh, excuse me. Uh, Mary Annie is responsible for the discovery of the plesiosaur. That is her major discovery. She was known to be this lady who would wander the beaches of Britain um, looking for fossils with her dog. Yeah, it's in Britain. I know, it's, it's very easy to forget because a lot of them don't sound British. And Orpheus occasionally sounds British, even though he's supposed to be British. They only make him sometimes British. Which is real funny. Um, are you fucking with me? Yeah, they need to tweak that for a little girl. So, yeah. But like I said, I'll think more about it later for giving reasoning for why. But those are kind of the key first off the head reasons. Wait, I, I fucking hate my ADHD sometimes. <laughs> oh, and Matsuno, since you're new to the stream, if you didn't know, we have chickens with us tonight. So if you hear any cawing, clucking, uh, all that stuff, that's why. Catfish, catfish round. Spectic teammates. Let's see how y'all's are doing. <laughs> yeah, I know. The Pampas Room. That fucking sound effect that I have uploaded on YouTube is still my most popular video to this day. <laughs> it now has over 1.8 thousand views <laughs> and it won't fucking stop. Yeehaw, okay. What is attention span again? <gasps> what? You can take on and off? I have more reasons to get Dazai. I don't know who this man is, but I must have the crossover skin. Okay. Um... <laughs> It's part of the accessory effect? What? I... I'm screaming. I... I I know I've been playing a fuck ton of just Orpheus, but I swear I'm a prisoner main still. Okay. Let's go. Where's my cookie? It comes off? That is so fucking... Okay, I'm gonna play some prisoner. I, I'm like, I have, I... I need to play prisoner. I haven't touched Luca and I have I haven't played as Luca in a while. And th in this guy, this guy is like my primary main. So uh, I mean, yes, or Orpheus is up there, but hear me out. I I've been playing I've been playing as Luca for a very long time. I rightfully need <laughs> You won't get it. Oh my god. <sighs> I love that. Okay, I'm gonna carry uh, Luca Rescue. That is amazing. But yeah, I've been a Luca main since 2020. <laughs> uh, 
I ended up playing a lot of novelist though because I like playing as Orphy. I, I think both forms of his are very fun. I see your message, Neon. I don't know if I should allow it. <laughs> then again, this channel is 16 plus, so you know what? I'll allow it this time. Orphy best. We need Horduka. God. Honestly, I... So, if anyone's curious what got me into IIDV in the first place, really, uh, three main things. One, I was already playing Dead by Daylight by then. Two, uh, Tong and Rampa crossover. Uh, well, more specifically, first, I was already playing Dead by Daylight. I was browsing YouTube and I came across Howdy B's video, Howdy Buys video on Identity 5, and I watched it and I was like, huh, interesting. I decided to stream the game for the very first time, and I was a bit sketch about it first because of my thoughts on um, the game industry's abuse of gotcha games and gambling, um, which is a tale for another time. Oh, it's Clerk. Oh, oh, um. Oops. Yeah, so I picked it up because of Howdy Buy. I s got to learn, I, you know, we of course meet Orpheus. And I was like, wow, this man's a mood for some reason. I don't 100% know why, but I find him oddly very relatable, huh? Um. I was like, okay, well, I like this dude. He's neat. <laughs> He's a furry related content creator! Stop! <laughs> Stop! <laughs> um, but I found Orpheus to be a fucking moon. <laughs> No, so I was like, oh, okay. I got frustrated with IDV, though, because I kept lagging and everything, so it basically was just unplayable for me at that point, so I didn't do much with IDV. Then I hear the Danganronpa crossover was a thing, and I was like, oh, Danganronpa. I like Danganronpa. I'll come back for Danganronpa and, you know, play it. So that's what I did. And that's when I really picked up the game and actually started streaming on Twitch for realsies. Um, and then I learned about Luca, and I was like, wow, I find Luca to be, I really like Luca. I find him to be very relatable. I'm going to use this character as my main because I like who he is. So basically the TLDR is I joined... I got into IDV because I found Luca and Orpheus to be a huge fucking mood in Danganronpa. There you go. <laughs> I was browsing Google Play. Valid. <laughs> Here's the other thing. I've kind of even like leaned more into Orpheus being a fucking mo a very relatable character for me for all sorts of reasons. <laughs> um, so, yeah. <laughs> That's also why I play as him a lot in recent times. I just go, I like this funny burp man. He's very relatable for a variety of reasons I won't go into. <laughs> Because I don't take all fair enough valid. For um, Luca, I kind of have. <clears throat> there, I kind of have. I, I have a few different reasons, but the primary one is honestly a bit sad. I'll be honest. Um, why am I saying a bit? It, it is definitely sad. But. Um, and it's also why I have a bit of a bias towards Alba as well. Despite not really playing him that much or that well. 
Um, but I do have a bias. <laughs> so, okay, if anyone doesn't want to hear the quick, short, sad e explanation, now is a good time to quickly mute this stream. Um, if you don't like sad stories about death. Um, I will say, if you decide to mute this stream, uh, just unmute it after, let's say, three minutes from now. I think that's a good enough time, good, good enough period. But, uh, TODR, basically, like Luca, I had, you know, a teacher that was very influential on me. Um, of course, I had a much better relationship with him in comparison to how Luca viewed Alva and all that shit. Because turns out Luca does not necessarily like Alva, even back when uh, pre manor shit. But anyhow, um, this teacher, he was my English teacher in high school. He was very nice to me. He saw that. I had a lot of potential in me, and I was very intelligent and skilled, and he recognized that, which was something not everyone really recognized in me, including sometimes my parents, where they would act not, where they were aware that I had a lot of potential and could do a lot, but it was not always reached, per se, or not always supported in a way where I could reach my full potential, basically. Um, to get a quick idea, they, my parents genuinely didn't believe I had the ability to learn another language. They just said, just take a ver the easiest language you can just so you can graduate, because we don't think you can ever learn any other languages. Uh, I proved them wrong by learning Arabic and acing it in college, but that's a different story. But anyhow, yeah, he was one of the few people who could recognize my capabilities as an individual. So he was like, hey, um, come be part of this whole academy that, uh, that whole in-school academy called, uh, Data. And basically it's a focused STEM program, uh, though it's now known as a focused STEAM program because of the addition of the arts. Back then it was STEM. And so that is part of how, you know, I conduct things the way I do and everything and why I seem so sciencey. It's because I already had this growing love and passion for science and technology and game design and all that stuff. And he was one of the only few people who really genuinely acknowledged that and tried to encourage me to enter a program that would allow those abilities to flourish. Anyhow, <clears throat> fast forward to later on in college. And I kept telling myself, I need to visit my high school teachers. I need to visit my high school teachers. I really appreciate the support and love they gave me that, you know, I wouldn't really get much elsewhere um, of this stuff. And he was one of them. And I never got around to doing that. And uh, around New Year's Eve, right as I'm leaving to work, and my workplace was fucking miserable and horrid, um, so I really wasn't interested in being there. This was back in 2016 where the elections for Trump were also taking place. So there was that factor too. Um, that, that level of atmosphere to it. And, um, anyhow, as I'm walking out the door, my mom just nonchalantly says, Hey, did you know your teacher died? He got supposedly he died in a car accident caused by driving in the rain. That New Year's Eve night was one of the most miserable nights for me. And I still miss him to this day. So to have a character, so basically to have a character like Luca, who is this very technology, science based character like myself who clearly has a lot of potential and everything and to have a teacher where regardless of what the relationship was clearly alpha was had some like had a decent 
really strong influence on him. And also, it's just depressing as hell for when Jill is the teacher. Um, you know, I, I, I related to that very much so. And, you know, the fact that his ability was really cool also drew me in, too. And that's basically why I play Luca. Um, so, now you know. I, I literally play Luca for sentimental values. More or less. And why, for me, Luca is kind of um, a very, kind of, very special character for me. So, that that's my little soft story. Um, sorry I went over the three minute mark, but I kind of thought most of it out of the way, so hopefully those who didn't want to hear uh, manage to not hear too much of the depressing shit, but yeah. Yeah, so now you know why. And why I get so excited over Luca and all that stuff. So, now you know. <laughs> With uh, Orpheus, he's just uncannily relatable. Yeah. Because I do a lot of things like prop making and all that shit. And I used to be a writer, too. I didn't publish anything because I was a young kid who had the dickens scared out of him over how people might think of my work um, thanks to shit like Twilight and the hate mongering for shitty writing on the internet. <laughs> but, actually no, I take that back. I did publish something. Then I, I can't remember if it's still on Kindle that you can buy. It's something real goofy. But it's a thing about these weird rabbit frogs called Roggets. I'll, I'll uh, talk about them someday. Yeah. Um, they're supposed to be these really ridiculous creatures. They're actually kind of cute looking. Um. This is very sad of me. This this is what happens when I have my attention span at zero. This is when I am have my ADHD at full force today. I'm gonna need a link. Um, I'll see if I can find it. I can't remember if I eventually deleted the book or not on Kindle. But I knew, I recall I did post it. I did upload it and people can, at the time, could buy it. And that it wasn't an inexpensive book. I think I placed it at like maybe ten dollars at best, something something like that. All hand drawn illustrations and shit. Nobody. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> How many people bought it? Zero. Here's your answer. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, it was my first ever book published. But I do, um, I do want to say that thanks to, like, here's the thing. Here's, here's my little shindig. Here's my little uh, spiel, as as you might want to say. Um, when I mean I find Orpheus uncannily relatable, it's because a lot of the interests you have are pretty much more or less on this on par or basically the same interests as mine. Um, and as a teenager, um, I actually used to. Uh, work with Inkwell Pen. And I still can actually work with one. I picked it up again. Because I was like, you know, I, I do all this, you know, I used to do all this really cool, fancy, banshee stuff that, you know, 
the characters I uh, like playing as and all that stuff and relate to actually do as their own tasks, you know, as their own hobbies and everything. So it kind of rekindled that interest in me again. And um, so I, I, yeah, so I basically picked up my uh, inkwell pen for the first time in over, I want to say, um, eight years, something like that. And I've illustrated with it. I've written with it. I literally can still do uh, calligraphic writing and cursive. I can do all that stuff, and it's one of those things. And recently, I uh, find like because I just didn't know where or how. Um, I could never get into the art of like uh, using wax seals. And I always wanted to do it as a kid. Like that is that is literally one of the uh, childhood passions of mine that I really wanted to p pursue growing up, but just didn't because I just didn't have access to the resources nor information on how to get started. But uh, you know, kind of the old school stuff started becoming more popular with people thanks to Neglossia's sake. So, Joanne's in a lot of places, you know, how the wax seal is starting to pop up and all that. So, I kind of um, now have re access to that shit. So, I p decided to pick it up and do my stick. Do my thing. Get out of the way. Fuck. So, yeah, I am starting to work with wax seals. Um, I'm returning to, like, my writing and all that. Because I used to do a lot of creative writing and was actually decent at it. Um, costuming, prop making. I finally have birds, which was something I always wanted growing up. So, yeah, that's that's some of the ways I just uncannily relate to Orpheus. <laughs> I don't like loud noises either, per se. I am very much a closed, kind of more quiet person. <laughs> as weird as that sounds. But I, I am. Um, I don't necessarily do well. Ironically, even though I realize and am going to be attending a lot more conventions more often in pursuit of being in pursuit of the career path of being an online creator. Uh, I ironically don't do well with noise and large crowds and all that stuff. So yeah. That's fair. Yeah, I don't like loud. I'm fine with the roosters calling because you get used to that at some point. And it's not like everywhere. <laughs> So, yeah. Am I loud music would be fair? Oh yeah, another interesting thing that I forgot to mention is I also come from a very art and music oriented family just like he does so we literally have a fucking piano in our house like we have a fucking grand piano so yeah nice thank you for stopping by good luck on your tiktoks so anyhow yeah that's some in uh, interesting information about my me self. <laughs> no problem. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I might wrap up this stream after this match. Um, so I can focus on getting some stuff done in time for Con Crunch. Because I will be 
for anyone curious, I will be out in Ontario, California for Anime Expo Chibi. So I will be out there next week on the 12th if anyone is interested. So just letting you guys know that I will be out there. Um, I'll probably be in costume as long as I manage to finish one of my costumes. And they're not going to be of like characters of Identity 5 or a series. They will be original costumes, but nonetheless, they're ones that showcase basically my capabilities and what I do in terms of art. <laughs> or what I can do in terms of art. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. I hope it goes well. I honestly uh, have a lot of fun running around and really getting to see, uh, you know, really getting to run around and show what I do in action, basically, if that makes sense. <laughs> I look forward to it. Um, let's see here. Aya. Oh, that was <laughs> I'm sorry, sir. That that I I felt that. I felt that. I am so sorry. As someone who's played patient a few times, I Oh, the pain of um <clears throat> missing your shot. I'm not too great with patient, but I can somewhat play him. Uh, my primary mains for survivors are uh, grave are prisoner, gravekeeper, and novelist, basically. I've been a prisoner main uh, since 2020 and a gravekeeper main since 2020 as well. So yeah. It's people all. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. Oh. I wish I had uh, a photo on hand with me right now to show what I have of red so far, um, but I don't. <laughs> but I will say, um, it's definitely, red is definitely maybe one of my uh, pet projects, I guess is the best way to put it. So there's a lot of love and detail that has gone into the character. And I do mean a lot of love and detail and has been a pet project for like three years. Just because of how much uh, I've been wanting to like really work with the project and get things down to a certain way so everything's functional and nothing's gonna break and all that stuff. And the reason for that is, the reason why it's a pet project of mine is because um, basically the story of Red is he's not like 
the story of Red is he's a he's part of a species design done by another artist named Miss Monster Mel. You can look her up under uh, Miss Monster or Miss Monster Mel. I highly recommend checking out her work, especially if you're a fan of sci-fi and sci-fi fantasy or anything that's kind of like a sci-fi grungy feel. She does a lot of that. And anyhow, Miss Monster, um, she likes to go ahead and create these kits, these uh, mask kits that you can pre-order from her and work on yourself. And they're original designs of hers, so they're often very limited run and all that stuff. And anyhow, I fell in love with her work when I was a teenager. And a dream, honestly, a dream project of mine is getting a kit for a new for her a new bot head or a new bot mask. But I know that's never gonna happen because she is never gonna do a run about run with the new bots again. So I basically spent ten plus years waiting for the day I could eventually get. A dream project of mine from her and while I could not get the new bot I did end up being able to purchase one of her robo dog masks robo dogman masks um, which is what red is so he's this very sci-fi looking ca uh, character w humanoid that has a canid like head and basically I just had the head and I was like, okay, I wanted to have this very rustic, semi, like this very rusted, rustic, uh, rustic car design kind of texture to it. That's basically what I wanted to do. And I literally spent so much time on it because it was like, oh my gosh, I finally got a dreaming project of mine from an artist that I absolutely adore. And so I'm going to cherish this project and really take my time with it, even if it fucking takes me forever. I literally waited 10 years for this. So, <laughs> it's been like that. And it really shows in the effort. I'm really proud of it, how it's been coming along. And I can't wait to show you guys. <laughs> That's all I can say. Um, so, who knows? Maybe you guys will see him. Um, uh, at Anime Expo Chibi. It's not guaranteed. It all depends on when I can get him finished because I still have a few things to finish on him. But you may see him then, but you'll definitely see him in the future. Uh, if you attend conventions and all that, you may see Red. Um, so look forward to that. And with that said, I'm going to go ahead and start up a raid because we have enough people for tonight. Uh, let me do my outro. I look forward to seeing you guys again tomorrow on Sunday at 7 p.m. Pacific. So come check us out. We'll be streaming more Identity 5. And let's go visit a fellow colleague streamer buddy of ours. Okay? Let's go do that. Um, let me see who is online. And I should check before I raid. Um, oh. No, no, mute, mute the site. Um, let's see here. Is there anyone online to show more? Dang, there's no one online. Um, so I guess that will have to be something to do next time, but definitely check us out tomorrow, okay? Thank y'all for joining. Stay safe and have a wonderful night. It was great seeing y'all. I always look forward to seeing new faces and old faces alike. Stay safe and have a wonderful night. Okay? Bye-bye.